China wants to drill through Earth's crust, something the Americans tried unsuccessfully 60 years ago. And the Chinese aren't just doing it for fun. What do they hope to find there? Let's have a look. In the 1960s, the Americans had a bold plan. They wanted to be the first to drill through Earth's crust and into the underlying mantle. The mantle's normally about 35 kilometers down on land, but under the ocean floor, it can be just 5 to 10 kilometers deep down. So they picked a spot off the coast of Mexico where the crust is thinner. The project was called Mohole. It's named after the Mohorovicic discontinuity, which is the boundary between the crust and the mantle. They began drilling into the ocean floor, but in 1966, after reaching just 183 meters below the seabed, the project was cancelled. It was too difficult and too expensive, and no one besides scientists was really interested. Now the Chinese want to do it for real. And they've got experience. Just two years ago, they began drilling a 10 kilometer deep borehole on land in the Tarim Basin. Why? Likely oil, because if you drill 10 kilometers down and find a McDonald's, you don't get to keep the burgers. But China imports about 20% of its oil, and the Tarim Basin is one of the most promising regions. What makes it unusual is not that it has oil, but how deep down the oil is. This basin has a continental crust buried deep under sediments. As a result, oil that would normally be found two or three kilometers down has ended up more than eight kilometers kilometers below the surface, so they had a good reason to drill. The project began in 2023 and just finished in February. It reached a depth of 10,910 meters. That's still somewhat less than the deepest hole in the world, the Kola borehole in Russia, which is a little more than 12,000 meters deep. But the Chinese might well break this record with their next project. For this, they've built a new ship called the Mengxiang, which means drill. It's designed to remain stable in one location and then lower down a pipe in segments and a drill until they reach the sea floor. From there it can drill more than 10 kilometers deep and that should be enough to reach the mantle. If the drilling is successful, that'll be the first country to ever reach the mantle. That'd be a major scientific achievement, getting direct samples from a part of the earth we've only ever studied indirectly. But this isn't just a about the science. It's also a power move. We only ever observed less than 0.001% of the seafloor. But the ocean floor holds valuable resources, rare earth minerals, cobalt, and large pockets of methane frozen under pressure in pockets underneath the ocean. Getting there first means getting the first pick. It's also about geopolitics. In international waters, no one owns the ocean floor, so it's a race. Whoever drills there first has a claim to what they find. On April 24th, the Trump administration signed an executive order to fast-track deep-sea mining in both the US and international waters. They hope to secure critical minerals like nickel, copper, cobalt, and manganese from the ocean floor. These minerals can be found down there in so-called nodules, which are potato-sized clumps typically found at depth of 4 to 5 kilometers. The stuff is literally just lying around there. These minerals are critical for technologies such as electric vehicle batteries, wind turbines, and solar panels. Other countries, including Japan and Norway, are pushing for deep-sea mining too. However, the recent US push has upset some people because the United States signed an international UN agreement but didn't ratify it, which means it isn't legally binding for Americans. Had they ratified it, that would require them to seek approval for deep-sea mining. The Americans, in contrast, argue that, well, since they didn't sign the agreement, they don't need permission. China did ratify the agreement, but on some occasions it interprets it to its liking, especially for what their rights in the South China Sea are concerned. Environmentalists are worried that all this trampling around on the ocean floor will disrupt ecosystems, which it almost certainly will. But to be fair, the oceans are so big that it'll be a long time until humans have any sizable impact with their mining activity. So while the Americans want to pick up sea potatoes, 
the Chinese are opening an entirely new chapter, and they're writing it with a drill. I'm always looking for product recommendations that you might find useful, and today I have one that I can't believe I didn't know existed. It's an electronic SIM card, an eSIM, from a company called Saley. What is it good for? If you're traveling, you can avoid roaming fees just by switching to a local eSIM. That can save you a ton of money. Or what I found it useful for is to keep using an old phone which no longer has a SIM card. I've been letting my kids use that to play Pokemon Go because at least that gets them out of the house. You can also use the eSIM to set a virtual location. How does it work? Download the app, select a country and a plan and do not forget to enter my code Zabina before checkout because that'll get you 15% off. Download the eSIM and switch it on. And that's it. I swear you don't need a PhD to figure it out. Sally has 24-7 support and if the eSIM doesn't work on your phone, a money-back guarantee. So if you have a trip coming up or an old phone lying around, I say go and have a look at Sally.com. It's a really useful service. Thanks for watching. See you tomorrow.